Hey everybody, it's me Steph from YourFertileSelf.com and I am here today to talk to you about that all-important topic, when do we take a pregnancy test? So let's see, you've been trying to conceive, you've been diligently tracking your fertility signs, you, you're on top of when your ovulation is, you had intercourse at the right time, you just want to know, when can I take a test? Everyone says you need to wait two weeks, but you see pregnancy tests at the store that tell you that you can test up to five days before you miss your period, and you just want to know the answer to that all-important question, when am I going to know if I'm pregnant or not? So, I wanted to kind of give you my take on that. So. I think in order for me to kind of answer that question for you, I want to talk a little bit about what is happening in your body. Um, let's say you have achieved fertilization, you have a fertilized egg, your, your husband, your partner's sperm has met your egg and fertilized it, you now have a fertilized egg. Um, yay! So what happens now? You know, what's happening in your body um, over after that happens? You know. So I think that is really kind of key to answering the question of when it's a good time to take a test. So let's see, you've got a fertilized egg, very exciting. So right away, you're, the first thing that's gonna happen is your fertilized egg cells are gonna grow. And it's, they're going to grow over five days to become a blastocyst. And this is sort of um, the first kind of major milestone um, on the way to a fertilized egg to become an embryo is this blastocyst stage. And, you know, not all of the fertilized eggs are going to make it to five days. You know, some of the, they it might die. You know, you just, it might not make it to five days. And if you're doing IVF, you are keenly aware of this. You know, you know that you go in for your retrieval and the next day you get the call from your doctor's office telling you how many of the eggs that were retrieved, how many of them fertilized. And then you get another call five days later telling you how many of the fertilized eggs made it to become blastocysts. Um, they don't all make it. So that's sort of the first kind of big milestone in a fertilized egg becoming an embryo. So there's five days right there where nothing, you know, you can't do anything. You can't take it, you know, you're not going to know anything. You know, you're, there's, it's still very crucial in development. Um, so after the five days, you're assuming your fertilized egg has, you know, has survived. It is now a blastocyst. Your blastocyst, and this has all happened inside your um, fallopian tube. So the next step in the process is for your blastocyst, your five-day-old blastocyst, to travel from your fallopian tube down into your uterus and attach itself to the lining of your uterus, which is called your endometrium. So your blastocyst will attach to your endometrium and it'll get all settled in, It'll get all snug like a bug in a rug. It'll get you know nutrients, nourishment, um, and that's really where your fertilized egg, your embryo, is going to kind of hang out for the next nine months and grow to become your fetus and ultimately become your baby. So the first thing that happens is your blastocyst attaches itself to the uterine lining, and that process is called implantation. So your Fertilized egg has spent five days inside your tube becoming a blastocyst. It's become a blastocyst and now it's traveling down to your uterus to do implantation. And that process takes a few more days. Um, it's going to kind of be different for everybody. Um, you know, in some cases, you know, it can take up to another five days for the blastocyst to travel down and implant. Um, for others, it, you know, for other fertilized eggs, it might only take two days. You know, really kind of, it just kind of varies, but um, kind of on the average, um, it takes a few days. So, um, you know, so your egg is fertilized. Five days after ovulation, it becomes a blastocyst if it makes it that long. And then about seven or eight days is kind of the average after that seven or eight days after ovulation, it will implant into the uterus. So that's a whole week. There's a whole week after your ovulation 
where things are just kind of like laying the foundation, you know, where nothing's, you're not going to know anything about whether or not you're pregnant. There's a lot of things happening inside your body, but on an outward level, and you're not going to know anything, and a pregnancy test isn't going to tell you anything. So there's a whole week that's kind of shot right there. So once implantation happens, once your blastocyst implants into your uterine lining and starts to, to kind of get nourishment there, um, your body will start to produce a hormone called human chorionic gonadotropin. That's a mouthful. HCG for short, we just call it the pregnancy hormone. Um, this is a hormone that is produced by your body when implantation happens, which sort of signifies that you're pregnant. Um, and that is what a pregnancy test will test for in your urine. So we all have um, a level, a very low level of HCG in our bodies all the time. So a blood test, you know, will will detect that. Um, but a but it's not enough that would show up in your urine and wouldn't show up on a pregnancy test unless you're pregnant, then you're producing more. And a blood test will show higher levels also. So that is what a pregnancy test tests for, is this human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG. So it's gonna take a few days then after implantation, which is already like between seven and 10 days after ovulation, Going to take a few more days for your body to start producing enough of this hormone, this HCG hormone, the pregnancy hormone, to really show up in your urine and be detected by a pregnancy test. Um, so that is happening as well. So, you know, there's a lot going on and it takes a long time. So we're already at like, you know, 10 or 12 days after ovulation before a pregnancy test might pick up that you're pregnant. And again, for some people, it might even be longer. Um, so, and if you, um, you know, have taken a trigger shot, if you are under care of a doctor and are doing IUI, if you're doing timed intercourse, um, if you're doing IVF, you know, if your doctor has told you to take an HCG trigger shot to basically induce your ovulation for your treatment, um, you know, then this HCG is going to be in your system artificially and you need to let that fade out before you actually start testing because you could get a false positive. You know, you don't know if the extra, if the positive result is from the HCG in your body from the trigger shot or from like actually being pregnant. So this is all a very long way of saying that I recommend waiting for two weeks before taking a pregnancy test. If you've been with me for a while, if you've read anything I've written, if you um, are in my Facebook group where we talk about this, you know this about me already. I am not a proponent of early testing. Um, you know, my feeling on it is if you are if you are pregnant and if a test will show you that at 10 days after ovulation, that's awesome. It's also going to show you that at 14 days after ovulation. And at 14 days after ovulation, your chances of having a reliable result are so much greater. I definitely recommend waiting until you miss a period to take a pregnancy test. Your missed period really is the first real symptom of pregnancy. And it just takes two weeks for that to happen. Um, so um, you can take that with a grain of salt. I know a lot of people like to test early, and if you do, you know, that's awesome. It's different for everybody. That's just always been my personal preference. I think that the benefit of finding out you're pregnant early is not really outweighed by, like, how much you can drive yourself nuts by continually testing early. Um, and then, like I said, if you are pregnant, you're still going to be pregnant at 14 days after. And it's always awesome whenever you find out. And I would rather find out when I know that I have a reliable, more reliable result. So I hope that's been helpful um, to just give you a little bit more information about what's happening in your body um, during that time from ovulation to your missed period. Feel free to uh, leave me a comment below. Send me an email, stephanie at yourfertileself.com. And I look forward to seeing you sometime soon. Bye-bye.